Hey everyone, welcome back. Today we've got some interesting news about Polestar 2 vehicles. We really want to have a look at this because I recently drove a Polestar 2 and it was a fantastic experience. I posted the video on this channel, a test drive, my experience, and it was fantastic. So today we have a different thing to talk about regarding to Polestar. It's reported that Polestar 2 owners plagued with faulty key fobs GPS cellular connectivity. Now the problem all center around functionality baked into the car's TCAM module. This article is by Lewin Day and it's written on the drive. Now in case you're wondering if this is just a made up story, I wonder the exact same. So we're going to do some fact checking. In fact, I'm going to talk about this on Twitter just to get the community respond to see if anyone is actually experiencing this, if this is actually a real issue because I'm on many different Polestar pages and I haven't heard about a problem with Polestar's key fobs or GPS or cellular connectivity. So I want to understand. So this is the other article that I did find about the same problem. Faulty module is locking Polestar 2 owners out of the car. So there is a possibility that this story could be real or it is a possibility that it could be over exaggerating. So before we go forward, we must remain objective. So owners of Polestar 2 EVs are complaining of persistent issues with the car's telematic and connectivity antenna module, that's the TCAM. This module is responsible for various radio related and communication functions in the vehicle. Now the NHTSA has fielded a range of complaints on the issue. Problems with key fobs and gaining entry to the car or perhaps the most worrying problems. Owners have complained of being unable to lock or restart the car. Others have found that they cannot get back into the vehicle after it's been locked behind them when the module has malfunctioned. Wow, this is quite worrying. So the TCAM also handles GPS receptions, which several owners have reported a buggy or malfunctioning. Now, other common errors include a loss of SOS call capabilities or a general loss of cellular connectivity over LTE, with the latter causing the car's internet-related functions to stop working. It raised safety concern if kids or pets were to be stuck inside the vehicle when it stopped responding to key fob. Some complaints also speak of a fear of being stranded in the event their vehicle will no longer allow them to access or to start the vehicle. The Polestar 2 does have an emergency physical key that will provide access in the event of TCAM failure. That's good. An emergency key is always good. It's always welcome. Now, it must be removed from the fob to be used and set off an alarm when used. The key fob must then be placed in the cup holder after gaining entry in order to switch the alarm off. One owner has posted on Reddit that they are thrown in the towel after repeated TCAM issues. Their vehicles have reportedly been to the dealership four times without a satisfactory resolution to the problem. Polestar Forum has a thread collating knowledge on the issue with multiple owners reporting problems since January this year. Since January this year? Well, it's it certainly missed me. So I don't think we've ever reported on this issue. But if we have, I do apologize. But if it's an issue that certainly started around January and they've been trying to get it fixed for the entire year and now it's suddenly starting to get worse, that I can understand why it would spur up the media to create more articles about this issue. That would make sense. But still, it's no excuse for the faulty, faulty system. Something like this needs to be handled carefully because I can only imagine being in that situation being in an emergency, you got to get to work, you got to drive your partner to work, and whoops, you can't open your car because the system is being faulty. That is extremely annoying, and yeah, it can cause distress and problems and, and arguments, and it's just, it's just room for a lot of unnecessary debate. It can also be in dangerous situations as well. You could be stranded in the middle of nowhere. You could leave your, leave your car, just step out for a minute, try to get back in and it's locked. Yeah, these things can be worrying. But like I said, it can also be over-exaggerated. So what I'm going to do is obviously go into my forums, go into my Polestar pages and try to understand, is this issue still ongoing? How is it being dealt with? Because these people are subscribed. These people are owners of Polestar 2s who are actually um, experiencing these problems. I want to get their opinion on these issues. 
That's what matters most, their direct opinion. Now it says here, one recommendation solution is to reboot the TCAM system by holding the front dismisser button for 30 seconds while the car is parked. Alternative, rebooting the infotainment system by holding the home button on the car head unit for 15 seconds has helped some. A more complex method involved disconnecting the car's 12 volt battery as well as TSAM's own internal backup battery for a more complete power cycle of the system. However, these are temporary fixes that don't solve the root cause of the problem. And the root cause of the problem is what needs to be fixed. The drive contacted Polestar for comments on the problem. According to the company representative, ensuring the car is up to date with the latest software is key. Several over the air updates have been issued since launch that deals with minor connectivity issues. The latest version, 2.4 OTA update, resolves a TCAM issue, according to sources, and has begun rolling out this week. It bears noting that car with no LTE connectivity will not receive updates. In this event, it may be necessary to either reboot the TACM as a above or contact a dealer for help with performing the update. So there is no date on these comments. When these comments were made by Polestar, if it was recent, if these comments were two months ago, two weeks ago, two days ago, six months ago, I have no idea. There's, there's no comments. But the article, article was published yesterday, 25th of October. It also says a loss of basic function like locking and unlocking the door is highly frustrating. Issues around GPS and TLE connectivity are less so, but these features are still relied upon by owners and are expected to work. Those affected by repeated TSCAA issues will be hoping that post our latest over the air update reaches them and solve the issues once and for all. And I hope so as well. I really do. Because for anyone having to give up this vehicle because the issues are becoming too severe, too annoying, that's going to be tough because I drove this vehicle with my partner in the, in, in the passenger seat. I love the vehicle. They love the vehicle. And I can only imagine being in certain situation, not being able to use your car and not having access, it being locked, it malfunctioning, having so much of these issues that you have to return the vehicle or sell the vehicle that's 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 tough that's um that's not that's not what we want to be honest so i can only imagine giving up your car simply because it's not performing to your expectations and of course this only drives those customers to other competitors like neo every company is creating electric cars right now issues like this they need to have a quick response to is issues like this especially when it when it involves customer safety especially when it involves customer safety or their dependent safety. Children can be locked in these cars, can be locked out of these cars in difficult conditions, cold conditions, rainy conditions. But it's not just Polestar. Many manufacturer experience problems like this. Launching a new car, you know, the Polestar 2 is still a relatively new car. It's been out less than five years, you know, so they haven't have full experience at dealing with all the upcoming issues. There'll always be new issues that are being founded and new ways of solving those issues, especially a car that's, you know, these cars, these modern cars, they're all run on software and software is so unpredictable. One minute it can be going well, the next minute it's completely crashed. I must say software and cars are a tremendously difficult combination and how we proceed in the future really has to be done with delicate tendency delicate imagination, delicate patience. I will look into this issue a bit further and see what's being done, see if the issue is being solved. If you've heard anything about it, or if you actually own a Polestar and you've experienced these issues, please share in the comments how you've fixed these issues. What's your experience dealing with stuff like this? Thank you for watching. Subscribe to see more. Leave a like, leave a comment. And of course, I'll see you in our next video.